going to be reading uh, John chapter 4. John chapter 4, uh, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made him baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of the Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? The Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. The Jews and uh, the Samaritans were loggerheads, they weren't friends at all. Jesus uh, answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, when it this other, do you know, that know the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord? If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And that's what the Lord Jesus Christ is offering each and every one of us, this other, my friend, living water. He's offering us eternal life, everlasting life, through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the one who was crucified upon the cross. God is offering you salvation, forgiveness for your sins, so that you can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That living water, have you received that living water from the Son of God himself, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world? The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And again, just like Nicodemus in the previous chapter, in chapter 3, she was looking at the physical as well. The same as he was looking at physically being born again, which was obviously not possible. We can't enter into the second time into our mother's womb and be born. But it's a, a, a spiritual thing. We need to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so this here, he says, and he would have given me living water. That's what we all need. We need that living water, that spiritual and eternal life. It can only come by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, the woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence or from where then hast thou that living water? So, as I said, she was thinking about the physical. But really... The Lord Jesus Christ was talking about something spiritual. Living water, that is eternal life, from the Son of God himself. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one who was crucified upon the cross, he can give you that everlasting life, this other, my friend. But you've got to come to him. You've got to come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. She went on to say, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, meaning physical, literal water. You know, you, you have a drink of water and you get thirsty again, especially on a hot day, on a sweaty day. But the point is this, this water will never run out. This water is satisfying. 
It satisfies the longing soul. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. This is what we also urgently, desperately need, everlasting life. The only way you can receive that is by the Lord Jesus Christ. When he was crucified upon the cross, can be your saviour this hour, my friend. But you've got to come to him. You've got to put your faith alone in him. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither or come here to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. In other words, call thy husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In other words, she was living with someone without being married to them. That's obviously committing adultery or fornication. In that saidst thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. See how these things are being revealed to her? She's seeing the Lord Jesus Christ as a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, Believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. In other words, the Samaritans worship, they know not what. We know, in other words, the Jews know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. See, so salvation was offered first of all to the Jews. And they had rejected their Messiah. They did not recognize the Lord Jesus Christ who he really is, the King of Israel. In fact, he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But God wants to save your soul this hour, my friend. The only way you can do that is if you put your faith in his beloved Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. In other words, I am the Christ. I'm God's anointed. I'm the chosen one. See, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. But is he your Saviour? He's available for the whole world to be saved. That is true. And God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But have you come to repentance? Have you acknowledged that you're a sinner before God? Admit that to God. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Wonderful thing to know that you're on your way to heaven. I wouldn't change places for you, uh, with you for one second if you're not saved. If you're not a child of God, because you're heading for the judgment of God in hell and eventually the lake of fire for eternity. God does not want that for you. We as gospel preachers don't want that for you either. But obviously God doesn't want a lot more than we. That's why he sent the Lord Jesus Christ to save us. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes, Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon, upon this came his disciples and marveled that he taught with the woman. Why? Because he was a Samaritan. 
And as we read earlier, the Samaritans have no dealings with the Jews. Well, the Jews have no uh, dealings with the Samaritans. Yes, um, yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She's right. He is the Christ. You know, the, you know there may come people on this earth saying that they're Christ, saying they're Jesus Christ and all sorts of stuff, but it's a load of rubbish. They're fools. They're imposters. But the Lord Jesus Christ is the Christ. God's anointed, the chosen one. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meantime, while the disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. And he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? In other words, if anyone brought him anything to eat, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ came for the Father's will, to do the Father's will, and no one else's will. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. This is what we need. Life eternal, found in Jesus Christ alone. The one who was crucified upon the cross can be your saviour, this other. Will you come to Christ? Will you put your faith in him? For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Yes, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal. That both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labour. Other men laboured, and ye are entered into their labours. Many of the Samaritans of this, that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Saviour of the world. Yes, that is true. He's the Christ, the Saviour of the world. But I want to ask you that question, Miss Argo. Is he your Saviour? You need to put your faith in him for him to become your Saviour. This is a personal issue. We need to get right with God ourselves. Yes, your relations may be going to heaven, but what about you? Are you still on your way down to hell on the broad road that leads down to hell and destruction? On the highway to hell, God does not want you to stay on that road. He wants you to get off that road, get onto the narrow road which leads unto heaven. The only way we can get onto the narrow road is through the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend. John 10 verse 9, he said, I am the door. Not a door, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and shall find pasture. Yes, is the Lord Jesus Christ your Saviour? I want to leave you with that question. Is he your Saviour? He can become your Saviour right now. If you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and God promises you everlasting life. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you're interested in this, look me up. YouTube.com forward slash peace.
by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a great night.